Hello, hello, it's Thumplet here. Welcome to the fifth episode of Thumplet Tutorial. Today's topic is on the set build rotation and the interval rotation. So two of the standard techniques when you want to describe a set of solutions that you cannot really uh, elaborate or like you can't list down all the elements just like in this case. So if you want to include values of x greater than or equal to 2, so this red part is the graph of x is greater than or equal to 2. So if you want to write your solution set or like the set of values of x that satisfy, well there's a lot like 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. That's already an infinite set. But there are, there are those values that like 2.5, 2.25, 2.1 and well we have to cover all real numbers greater than or equal to 2 and you just can't write it all down like as an element of, sorry, as elements of a set. So we have to rely on these two ways to describe the set because we can't really enumerate all the elements. We have to write some sort of mathematical uh, expression to describe the set. So we have the set builder notation on the left, which looks a little bit straightforward, and in, in, in the interval notation on the right, which contains some uh, brackets, uh, some parentheses, and some numbers inside. And uh, the first part, like the x, is an element of that's part that part is optional well if you want to explicitly say that it's the value of x that we're talking about then you can include this but sometimes uh, we don't have to necessarily include this because it's already understood that whatever um, interval notation you write that's going to be like the solutions for a certain a variable like in this case x now we're going to this we're going to um, dive into how do we write the set builder notation and the interval notation uh, by providing examples now let's try, let's try to do uh, the following. So the first one, we have uh, two simple ones. We have x greater than or equal to 2 and x less than, ne uh, x less than negative 3. Now the set builder form is actually not that um, difficult. So all we have to do is just write a pair of braces. And whatever go inside, it's going to be like a description of this set. Now usually we put um, the variable that we want to get a solution of. So in this case, x and then a bar meaning, or we read this bar as such as. So like x such as, and then whatever we write here, it's going to be like a description for x. Now the set builder notation form, it's going to be more straightforward because we can literally say, okay, this set will contain uh, values of x such that x greater than or equal to two. So we can literally write it as like this, and we're gonna read this set as, okay, the set of all values of x such that x is greater than or equal to two. Now, we can always put more and more uh, conditions inside. So if you want to explicitly say, for example, that x is a real number because, you know, um, sometimes we might say x greater than or equal to 2, but we want to uh, like restrict it on integers. But let's just say we want real numbers. We can, we can write a comma or, um, or the word or, or like and. So I think those are very uh, interchangeable. So we can like write a comma or an end, but I'm just going to write a comma. So it will be more uh, of symbols than words. And I can write here, X is an element of uh, the set of real numbers. So again, this, uh, the set builder notation, it's more straightforward and it's a little bit easier to understand. But the other uh, standard, the other standard method of writing a solution is the interval notation. Now in an interval notation, there's practically just two things that you have to know. Now, one is the use of brackets, and the other is the, sorry, the parentheses, and the other is the use of brackets. Now, when they use parentheses on either side, so by the way, uh, as you can see here, it doesn't have to be paired, so the left part might be a, bra a bracket, the right part might be a parentheses. Well, it might be also the case that both sides are going to be brackets, both sides are going to be parentheses, but there are really no restrictions because that's how we define that set. Now, if we have parentheses, it just means that it's not included. So, for example, if I write the uh, like two to positive, uh, let's say two to three. Now, this means that the left part the, or the left number over here is like the lower boundary, and the right number here is the upper boundary. So, we say that this set covers uh, real numbers. Again, when we talk about um, the set, we always use um, we always oh, sorry. When we talk about the interval notation, uh, it generally means uh, real numbers. So we wouldn't describe, for example, if, I, if you write like this, it is already understood that you're talking about real numbers and not just integers. So like, 
this set does not mean 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, but this literally means all the real numbers that start uh, that from 2 to positive infinity. Now, what does the braces mean? Oh, sorry, what does the parenthesis mean? It means that it's not included. So we just say that these uh, this set contains real numbers from 2 to 3, but we don't include the 2 and the 3. So uh, it's uh, analogous to a open so it's an open circle and the number line. Now, for this case, however, like the value of x greater than or equal to 2, well, we have a lower bound of 2, but we don't have an upper bound. So if we don't have an upper bound, just like in the example here, like in this one, or actually, it's actually the same example. If we don't have an upper bound, or we don't have a, if we don't have the value for one bound, then we either use positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on the case. Now, for example, here we have x greater than or equal to two. Well, we know that two is going to be the lower bound, so the left number is going to be two. Now, the right number there isn't a bound, so we're just going to write positive infinity to indicate that there is no bound. Now. The side where uh, there is an infinity, you never close it. We never put a closed, uh, closed uh, parenthesis or a bracket to whatever uh, infinity there is. But if there's an infinity, we always put it in open brackets. So, so we we open in, we just write a parenthesis to indicate that it, the set is like an open interval. Now. Uh, on lower bound, since 2 is included because we have the greater than or equal to symbol here, so we're just going to write a bracket. So a bracket means an equal sign, oh sorry, the bracket means that it includes 2, and if I, for example, if I write this as an a open interval, like a parenthesis, then this set will mean x is greater than, equal, greater than 2, but since we want to include 2, we have to put the brace. So um, uh, let me just Whoops, let me just put the interval notation here and I'm going to put the set builder notation here on the left just for comparison purposes. Now we can just continue this thought and try on with the other items. Now this one, x less than negative 3, again set builder notation, we can write it pretty straightforward. So we're going to define a set where the, value, the variable is x. So this set will contain all values of x, this bar meaning such that, so x such that. Just, we'll just write the condition that we want, x less than negative 3. All right, so that's how set, build, set builder notation works. But for the interval notation, we have an upper bound of negative 3, right? Since x is less than negative 3, we have an upper bound. So the right number is going to be ne negative 3. Now in this case, uh, there is no lower bound. So we don't know what the lower bound is, so we're just going to write negative infinity. Again, the part where there is an infinity, we always open it. So we open it with a parent. We, uh, we put an open interval, so a parenthesis. And now for negative 3, since it's just less than, there is no equality. So there's no less than or equal to in this case. So unlike the first example we have, where we put a bracket, in this case, we're going to put a parenthesis, indicating that negative 3 is not included. So again, analogous to an open circle in the number line. So these are just simple examples. And let's try to focus on some examples that uh, might be uh, uh, that involves more conditions, like this one. We have the or and the and. Now, if we, call, if we recall sets, or and and are the same as just saying the union and the intersection. So we can um, view it this way. So again, the set builder notation, you can actually write it like directly, even with words. So I can just say that, okay, the set builder notation, so I want my set to contain values of x such that this condition holds. So I just literally copy x greater than or equal to 2 or x less than or equal to 0. But for an interval notation, let me just uh, visualize this real quick on the number line. I cannot really write uh, words in the interval notation. So let me just quickly uh, write a sketch of this graph. So it's 0 here and 2 here. And it seems that uh, it's greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 0. So we have like two different, uh, we have two disjoint sets technically because the left part or the left part of this um, expression means uh, x less than or equal to zero. And I know that I can write it as an interval notation as follows. So if I'm just going to focus on this part, the left part, I know the upper bound is zero and it's included because there is this equal sign in the inequality. 
and there's no left part so there's no lower bound so i'm just gonna write negative infinity again the part where there's an infinity i'm always gonna put a parenthesis and that's for the left part and on the right part i have a lower bound of two so i know it's gonna be two again it's gonna be closed because uh, there is this equal sign now from two to i mean this part it's going to the right and there is no upper bound so i'm just gonna put positive infinity because there is no upper bound and since this is an infinity i'm just going to automatically put a parenthesis now as i've mentioned a while ago this or is analogous to a to the union of sets so if i want to write this um, expression in interval notation i'm literally going to translate my or over here into a union so if i'm going to write this in interval notation it's going to be negative infinity to zero union 2 to positive infinity so we can kind of get the idea that this thing like an interval notation it actually means a set just like the set field notation but although this doesn't really look like a set because it contains a parenthesis and brackets in a weird places but generally speaking these two are just two sets and then this union we're just taking a union of the two sets so these are just actually equivalent things we're just trying to get a set that defines the set of val the values of x that we actually want so again these two are equivalent in this case so um, you can uh, depending on the scenario you might uh, and then again uh, the set field notation is much more straightforward but the interval notation i think it looks a little bit more formal because this, this doesn't really contain english words but purely mathematical um, symbols and expressions Next, let's try to focus on x greater than or equal to 0 and x less than or equal to 2. Now, it is technically okay to say that I can say that, okay, x such that x greater than or equal to 0 and uh, x less than or equal to 2. But generally speaking, whenever there's an and, um, chances are we can simplify it because and means an intersection. So we might be able to get the intersection of um, the set. In fact, I'm going to, again, quickly, quickly do a, a sketch of what this looks like. Now, again, I'll have my two critical points at zero and two. Now, if I focus on x greater than or equal to zero, it's going to be an open, uh, a solid circle here and covers all values to the right. And then the x less than or equal to two, again, solid circle here, it'll cover all the values to the left. And since I have an intersection, well, I should uh, get what's common to both. And it seems that what's common to both is the values between 0 and 2 and both of 0 and 2 are included so this blue part would actually be what this actually means so I can simplify this into saying okay I should just have 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 because that's what uh, this actually means so generally speaking uh, when we ha if you have an and I guess we can simplify it and it you're going to see in the later examples that whenever we have an and, chances are we can actually simplify into a just a better expression. Just like in this case, I've managed to simplify it into 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Now, this is just technically one expression, just like uh, these two examples. So the set build notation, I guess you can pretty much guess it. It's going to be the set of all x such that, well, this specific condition holds 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. Now, for the interval notation, uh, the only difference with these is that we have two bounds. We have the lower bound and the upper bound, which is very nice because the two numbers are just going to be 0 and 2. So the left part is 0, the, the right number is 2. Now, both of them are included because of this equal sign in the inequality. So both will be closed. So brackets to indicate that 0 and 2 are both included. And this is indeed it. Now, it might be weird to uh, look at it, but then again, interval notation, it just, it's just like a set. So we can view this as this anyways, uh, this self builder notation form, but it just looks more formal than a set builder notation form. But then again, it will just really depend on probably the, um, the worksheet that you're working on or like the instructions in a given exam. So both are equivalent, but just make sure that you know which is which. Right, let's proceed to uh, further examples. Now, talking about what I've, what I've mentioned a while ago at the start, like why do we have to 
introduce these two like sets or like ways to uh, uh, write sets. But that doesn't necessarily mean that like this type of sets, like the set of the set containing one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I mean, this can obviously be written in uh, set interval, uh, the set builder form and the interval notation. It's just that it doesn't really um, make sense to do that, and you're gonna see why. Now, as I've mentioned a while ago at the start, uh, the set builder notation and interval notation, we're gonna technically use it to describe a set where we can't list down the elements. So if have we have a set like this, it, chances are we don't really have to um, write it in set builder notation or interval notation, but we can if we have to. Now, all we have to do is just to describe the set. For example, if I write to, if I want to write this set in an, in a set builder notation, I can say that oh, these are just positive integers from one to seven. So I'm I'm just gonna literally say what uh, I'm gonna literally write down what I said. So the set of all x such that well, I said that x is a positive integer. I can write x is a positive integer. And okay, between one and between one and seven, so I can write one less than or equal one less than or equal to x less than or equal to seven. Now again, I'm using the comma instead of the word and just to become uh, just to be more uh, formal here. But generally speaking, this is already a good uh, way to describe the set. It's just a set of uh, elements x such that sorry, it's just a set of values of x such that x is a positive integer and x is between one and seven inclusive. Now for the set builder notation form, it's kind of more difficult to write it down because as I've mentioned, whenever you have an upper bound and a lower bound, or sorry, whenever you have an interval notation, it will generally mean the set of real numbers. So I'll just write here that it's kind of hard for us to write it down. I mean, sure, we can write it as a union of sets, but I guess it doesn't really make sense, like the set of one union, the set of two and so on. But so yeah, generally speaking, um, if we want to write uh, something in interval notation, it will generally be real numbers. So the set builder notation form, it comes in handy because we can easily describe uh, the set. But for the interval notation, generally, we just want to describe like a set of real numbers or some set that we cannot really uh, enumerate the elements of. Anyways, let's try to um, do more examples here. We have this one. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 greater than 0. Now, this is just a quadratic inequality. And this is just like well, one of the examples in the, um, the previous one where we have two conditions. Now, let's try to see what this will result into. Now, let's try to solve this first. So let's just factor this part. So it's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 1. And this will be greater than 0. And we're going to, again, use the number line to our advantage here. So we're gonna draw, so we're gonna graph our, uh, sorry, plot our critical points, negative one and four, and maybe you wanna test some values. Let's try to test uh, x equals five, then that maybe see if it'll work. Now if x equals five, it's going to be one times six, which is going to be six, and that's indeed greater than or equal to zero. So we know that uh, the right side is going to work. And in fact, you can uh, verify uh, some value in this region, this region, and you're gonna find that uh, this region doesn't work and this region actually works. So it's going to be this part over here. So this is just like one of the examples in the past where we have two uh, like different parts. So we can technically say that the left part here means x uh, less than or equal to negative one. And the right part here is x greater than or equal to four. And to combine these two, we have to use the union or like the or word in English. So union in this case. Now again, set builder notation is pretty straightforward. I can literally say, okay, the set of all values of x such that x less than or equal to one or x greater than or equal to four. Again, the set builder notation is kind of more friendly because we can actually read what it is. Now for the interval notation, let me just uh, put this a little bit down here. Now for the interval notation, we need uh, these two like sets and then we're gonna take the union of it. So we, uh, x less than or equal to negative 1. We have an upper bound of negative 1. It's closed because we have an equal sign in the inequality. We don't have a lower bound, so I'm just going to write negative infinity. And whenever you have an infinity, we're going to pair up with a parenthesis. So an open interval. Now, the or, it's going to be translated into a union. So let's put the union here. And for the x greater than or equal to 4, it's going to be a set 
closed because 4 isn't included because of this equal sign the inequality the x greater than or equal to 4 it doesn't have an upper bound so it's going to be positive infinity and we're going to um, cut an open interval since we're talking about an infinity here so again we have two possible ways to answer this question the uh, the green one is the interval notation and the blue one is the set builder notation again depending on what you prefer or what the question asks for like a specific a specific format that uh, the test or like your teacher asks you to do so depending on the scenario but both are generally accepted now let's try to uh, let's try to give you some examples for you to try um, I have following examples over here I have this one 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 less than or equal to 0 3x minus 1 less than 2 and finally we have x minus 1 quantity squared times x minus 2 greater or equal to 0 again I have these three examples so this will be my first example this will be the second example and this will be the third example and try to do them and write your answer in both the set builder notation and the interval notation and tell me your answers in the comments below and this wraps up the fifth episode of template tutorials on set builder notation and interval notations hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and i'll see you in the next one bye bye